<laughs> what do you want to say about that? You just heard my question. Yeah. What, what's the big cost of growth of JMC? I, I think uh, you know, there are a number of factors there. You know, certainly. The, Nothing simple. No, it's not simple, and I think you know the costs of healthcare in general are mm -hmm. contributing. But we also know we're dealing with a complex population of people. Um, you know, they have a lot of... Uh, so our plan wasn't really good, and we're trying to address that today, aren't we? Uh, Make the, it more comprehensive. I think that the, you know, the plan was fine, um, but maybe the system hadn't quite uh, been as strong as it could be in terms of attending to the complex needs of the population. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that uh, by putting some emphasis around the idea of coordination and intensive coordination, that uh, the folks careful in GAMC will get better care. And that's going to help them, and it's going to help the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. what, what is missing? That you would it, really it, like I think that uh, the bill that we passed uh, before yeah. uh, had better funding. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Underfunded, underfunded. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we knew once uh, Senator Berglund, Representative Murphy, um, came out earlier about an hour ago and shared that there was kind of a framework of a possible um, deal that was put together, and um, and then we're just kind of learning about details as they come out. Have we lost any care by this deal? So I think we're still kind of looking at the details, um, but we feel this is a you know significant improvement over transitional Minnesota care. What I'm kind of confused about is what accounts for the tremendous growth of GMC. Is it more people joining the rules, or just health care going up like that much anyway? Mm -hmm. What is what's really growing that number? Well, you know, there's there's different numbers about how dramatic the growth in GAMC has been. If you look at it compared to the growth of healthcare inflation overall, it's not really nearly as dramatic as it seems. Then I wonder, um, are we qualifying more people for the role? With this new proposal? No, with the whole point, I wonder if that was sort of accounting for the growth, that more people were qualifying for GMC because of the economy, that they were in such a position that that's all that was left for them. That may have been true. I think it was also just the overall cost of health care in the state, health care services in the state has been going up. You know, people's health insurance premiums are going up. Those are the same set of cost increases that are causing GMC costs to go up as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. There's still a lot to learn. Yes, thank you. I, um, well, when did you know that this one was going to happen? Let's start there. It kind of surprised us. I ran over here just in time. Well, mid-afternoon, uh -huh. we were finishing up some other work here at the Capitol, and we got word that they had reached an agreement that people thought they could could live with here. Yeah. This is a big day. Um, kind of happy, but also we were kind of confused as to what really the details are. It's a little bittersweet, I would say, yes. because it does some very good things. It keeps a basic health care program for Minnesotans in place, GAMC. It keeps Minnesota care intact, which is really important for working Minnesotans, especially those working Minnesotans who don't have children, who are potentially going to be knocked off of Minnesota care. It also gets an agreement from the governor that he's not going to go after this program again through any veto or unallotment type of mechanism. So those are important wins in this. I think the, the concern is around um, doctors and nurses who are not in these coordinated care organizations may have some challenges with payments. It makes you and so, wonder, too, if this couldn't actually make work for more man hours for them. They yeah. could almost see more staff for this kind of yeah. coordinated care. Yeah, I, I think, the, you know, it, it depends on who is providing the care. You know, it's probably um, more for nurses and high-level nurses and physician's assistants and people like that, because if you're moving towards a preventative model, and that's the goal here, right. healthier people, more prevention, more stability, then yes, I think that, you know, it could have an effect on the emergency room if we're moving, trying to move people away from the emergency room to that coordinated care, but everybody agrees that is the direction we have to move in the state, is towards coordination of care and prevention. And I'm speaking of accounted for the tremendous growth in the first place of GAMC. Is it really health care growing? Or is it the number of people growing and joining the, the, the roles? Yeah. Are we really growing the role, too, at the same time of their economy? 
Well, I think there's a couple of things. I think that both of those things can be having a real effect here. That, you know, overall, we have seen poverty grow in Minnesota over the last number of years, and we have to be working on that issue. We've seen poverty grow in the suburbs in Minnesota, and a lot of people who are in that position do have to rely on something like GAMC, General Assistance Medical Care. So I think that there are a number of factors there. Um, you know, we do also know that it's a, it, when um, a lot of things happen with people who suffer from mental illness and they don't have access to stable, stable care, that that can create kind of a downward cycle for them and for their families. And so our hope is here once again that we're creating a new model that's going to be helpful to those Minnesotans and to their families. Well, we hope that actually in the delivering of health care in a more cost-effective way through coordinated care, that, that this will not add to that. There are other factors out there that are adding to the cost of increased care, more the issues of uninsurance and other things, but hopefully because we're going to continue to cover this population, that will have less of an effect. If general assistance medical care had gone away, it would have had a significant effect on people's insurance rates. I was surprised to see how many vets I met in yes. the movement they were yep. using it. Yep. And that's where I think, you know, I, I, I can appreciate what the governor has to say, but the reality is we still have eight to 10,000 veterans who get their care wow. through general assistance medical care and are not always eligible for veterans administration type care for a variety of reasons, but they serve their country and we need to be sure that we are taking care of them. You, you mentioned the wins. What are some losses? Well, I think this issue of providers and payments is a real, you know, when the governor talked about that we had a reduction in provider payments in the bill that we tried to override of 50%, this has actually potentially a larger reduction. So I really wish the governor would have been accurate about that. Um, but, you know, that is something we're going to be watching. It's also a very fast movement to coordinated care. And so we're going to have to be watching that to make sure it works well. Okay. Thanks, Thanks you guys. Thank you. Uh, a reinforcement of the fact that uh, health care is very expensive and to cover you know poor citizens means that um, the state government has acknowledged that it's going to require a lower reimbursement rate in order to, to keep uh, keep these in, keep the, keep the poorest and sickest Minnesotans covered and which means you know as representative Huntley was saying that means higher costs for the rest of us. In, in, the, in the form of uncompensated care, and I mean the, the cost to providers isn't changing in order to, to administer this care, so the rest of us who are covered through our employer or who are purchased insurance on our own, it, those costs are going to increase. Do you see a day when we won't be able to afford it, you and me? I, sure, I mean, I sure hope not. Uh, you know, th this type of reform, this uh, these CCOs are, I mean, in, in some ways it's, it's, it's a it's happening in some healthcare systems around the country. This might take more staff though. It's going to take someone, if you're coming in to see me periodically, I'm going to have to keep a file on you, I'm going to have to yeah. really follow you, whereas currently I see you and you're gone. It's going to take more staff and it's probably going to take more hours from those staff, which which means uh, more cost for so staff time. So maybe see hidden costs from today's decision. Possibly. I would, I would you're a legislative assistant, Dan? I am, Who yeah. Do you work for? I work for Representative John Ward and Representative John Purcell, and and I, I just came down here to, to check it out. And a lot of my friends are you know involved in this. There, a lot of my good friends are involved in the Save GAMC coalition, and you know I, I care a lot about them, and I care a lot about the work they do personally. And I know you know obviously my my legislators that I work for care a lot about this issue too. And um, I met a few people in the movement. What sort of surprised me was how many vets there were. Yeah, uh, and, and that's that's another reality. And you know, there are there are organizations who are able to provide care for them, or at least you know provide assistance to them. But uh, it's it's all a question of who's going to pay for it. Do you think this is a sustainable program? Which which program? The CCO. Do you think CCO is going to be sustainable? You know, and and another reality of it is we we have to try it out at some point if if we hope for this to to someday become you know normal practice and unfortunately uh, it almost looks as though the sickest and poorest Minnesotans become sort of guinea pigs for this model of care.
and, and I hate to use that term, but but I think that's what it that's what it looks like. 